Well, good morning, everybody. We welcome you on once again to our morning service um, where we've been meeting with you. We know because of the lockdowns, we are not able to meet as a church, but we, from wherever dif different places we are in, we know that our God is omnipresent, so we still can fellowship, we still can meet, we still can praise God and worship God. So we, we thank you for making time to join us and we I am Bishop Brian Mugabazi from Covenant Life Ministries Harare, Praise Stephen Echo. Uh, and we love you and thank you for always being part and parcel of this broadcast. Encourage you to share this broadcast, get somebody to be encouraged, get somebody to also get to hear the word of God. God bless you. We're going to go into the word of God and I'm going to read two scriptures today that I pray and I hope that they will help you in an incredible way. Let us go into the book of 1st uh, uh, first, first Samuel, chapter number 13, from verse number 19. 1st Samuel, chapter number 13, verse number 19. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, Least the Hebrews make them swords or spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share, and his coulter, and his axe, and his mattock. Yet they had a fire for mattocks, and for the coulters, and for the forks, and for the axes to sharpen the gods. So it came to pass in that day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. But with Saul and Jonathan his son were they found. We're going to read again Isaiah 54, Prophet Isaiah chapter number 54. Isaiah is one of the major prophets uh, who is very interesting because of his look into the coming of the Messiah, the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Isaiah chapter number 54, we're reading from verse number 15. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather against thee, they shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. I've created the worst to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against thee in judgment shall I condemn. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Let's read the last scripture. Luke chapter 8. We're reading from verse number 22. Now it came to pass on a certain day, that he went into the ship with the disciples and said, Let us cross over and go to the other side. Let us cross over and go to the other side. Now, from the scriptures that we have read, we are getting to a place where we are we are meeting with, with Saul and Jonathan. And the Bible is saying, and in that in those days, the nation of Israel was under a siege. And the Philistines made sure that there was no man who was a blacksmith. Now, the duty or the work of a blacksmith was to make sure that they create weapons. Now, as they were creating weapons, the weapons, so all the weapons for warfare, the swords, the, the spears, um, were all being created by blacksmiths. So what the Philistines made sure is they removed all blacksmiths from the nation of Israel, and then they had them in Philistine. So... Israel, no matter how powerful men that they had, no matter how great men of war that they had, they then could not get to a place where they could fight. By reason that among them had been removed the men of war. Among them had been removed the ability actually to, to fight, which means the weapons had been removed from them. Now when we go into the, then the book of Isaiah chapter number 54, I think from verse number 15, we say, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against us, they shall fall. But then he says, behold, I've created the smith that bloweth the coal. So God is then saying, there is something that I did is, 
is I've created a smith. I've created the, the, the man that is able to create the weapons for you. Now, if I've created that man, therefore, uh, that brings the instrument for you. Therefore, you then can stand and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper because God has given me the blacksmith or the, the ability to have the weapons to fight against the enemy. Now, we need to understand that we, we will go through challenges in life. We will go through uh, progressive challenges at one time or another. You, you, you will face a battle. We are in a battle with COVID-19 right now. We are in a battle with all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. We are in a battle right now against the economic situation. We are in a battle right now against all kinds of things that might be wanting to fight against us, that might be wanting to pull us down, that might be wanting to, to take us down. So we might be in a battle right now with a lot of things now. As we are in that battle, ladies and gentlemen, that's why the Bible is then saying, but no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now, let's go to the second scripture that we have read, the third scripture that we read. We then come to meet Jesus, and the Bible is then saying, in the book of uh, in the in the book of of, of Luke, that then Jesus takes his disciples and he says, "Let us cross over and go to the other side. Let us cross over and go to the other side." So he is talking to his disciples and saying, "Let us cross over and go to the other side." Now, as they begin to take the journey to go to the other side, they begin to face a battle now. Every time, ladies and gentlemen, you decide to go to the other side of life, you will face certain battles. You will face certain battles. As long as you decide to be on the same place where you are, you are not going to face any battles in your life. But every time you make a personal decision that where I have been, I don't want to be in the same place anymore. I want my life to change. I want things in my life to change. I want to go to the other direction. I want to take the next step in my life, I want to get married, then battles will come. The day that you make up a decision that you want to start a business, that's when you will see that there will be all kinds of battles fighting against you. So battles will always come as a result of a decision to cross over to another side. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hear me and hear me very well this morning that every time that you make up your mind to do something, there will be a battle that you have to fight. There will be something great that you need to face. There will be a Goliath that is standing in your path. There, there will be a giant saying, you're not going to grow, go to the other side. The giant might be a lack of money. The giant might be a lack of qualification. The giant might be a lack of connections. The giant might be because there is nobody around you who can take you from where you are, take you to the other side. So, But I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that as you face that giant in your life, you have to make a decision that I still have to cross to the other side. Now, the Bible then says, we will read from verse number 20. Now, as they kept to pass the same day that they went into the ship with his disciples, it says, let us cross over to the other side. Now, and they launched forth. No, so Jesus and the whole enterprise of the disciples decided that we are launching forth and we are going to the other side. There is something that we want on the other side. There is something that we want to, 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 to meet on the other side. There is something that we want to experience on the other side. So when he made that decision, the Bible says they launched out into the, into the water. So I want you to understand that every time that you launch out from one side to the other side, they were launching into a, into a period or into the water. Now, because whenever we talk of water, we're talking about a place where nothing is stable. Everything there, they, 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 there's nothing that can really um, that can really carry you around there. Everything is unstable when you get into the water. You are moving from land and getting into the water for you to cross over to the other side where there was also land. But what he then does, ladies and gentlemen, is 
He had to go through a period of instability. So I want you to understand me that every time you make a decision, I'm going to expand my business up. I am going to get married. I'm going to do something bigger. You are going to have to go through a period of instability. Instability is a sign that you are going to another dimension. Instability is a sign that you are going to another level. Instability is a sign that something is shifting within you. But as long as, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, God then says to the children of Israel, you have been around this mountain for too long. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you become, you get into a comfort zone, you, be, you, you continue to cycle around the same mountain for a long time. The moment you, are, you, you remain there, you're not going to progress or do anything great and powerful. That's why you have to understand that there are times when you need to make a decision that I have to cross over to the other side because there is size to life. Life has got different sides. There is a side where things are okay, things, but there is a side where things are super. But for you to move from there, there is a price to pay. There is a period of instability to go through. There is a period where you have to have sleepless nights at times. There are periods where you have to be praying the whole night. There are periods where you have to be fasting for, for three days and three nights. There are periods where you might not have any money in your pocket. But all you know is that I am going somewhere because all I am doing is, is say I'm paying the price for where I want to go to. I want you to hear me. The, the Bible then says, then Jesus got into the boat. The Bible says, then he slept. I, I love this part about Jesus sleeping. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's, it's, it's amazing that Jesus was sleeping during a storm. Because the Bible says water was filling the boat, but Jesus was still sleeping. Things were happening, but Jesus was still sleeping. Now, uh, there is a period where you begin to uh, create something within you that is called the peace. Peace in God. Peace in God. And then you get to a period of peace of God. Peace of God. Now, peace in God is a result of the work of Christ. But me coming to Jesus Christ, receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I just if suddenly have got peace in God. I've got peace in God. I've got peace in God. But then I can, by experience and by working with God, your mind is so made up on, 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 on the direction you are taking and what is happening in your life. Your mind is so made up that you are not moved by anything. You now have got the peace of God. So now by having the peace of God, you can sleep in the middle of a storm. You can sleep when everything else is going in the wrong direction. You can sleep when it seems like things are not happening the way that they are supposed to be happening. You still can sleep by reason that you are with the peace of God. Now, the Bible says that so Jesus is sleeping. And as he's sleeping, the storms are coming. They then have to work him out. They have to work him out, but he, he then wakes up and he calms the storm. And the moment that he calms the storm, he rebukes the wind. That's when the disciples then woke up and, and the Bible says, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They bowed down and worshipped him for the first time. They say, truly, who is this man? Because on the other side, they had seen him heal blind Bartimaeus. On the other side, they had seen him perform miracles and all kinds of things. On the other side, they had seen him provide bread to 5,000 people, but they had never seen him speak to nature. So on this side, when they then began to experience the other side of Jesus, the only way that they could experience the other side of Jesus was them to go through a period of instability. That's why I want you to understand me that when God is taking you through a period where things seem like they are bad, what he's wanting you to do is get to a place where you can know that there is a Jehovah Jireh. Because you need to understand that the name the names that we give to Jehovah are not the names of Jehovah. Those are not his names. Those are names given by people due to the experiences that they had with him. So when they were going through a, a period of war and then peace suddenly, then they say, surely Jehovah Shalom. So there is a name that you begin to give to God by reason of the experiences that you will go through. So as you're going through a period where there is sickness in your body, you will get to a place where God will heal you and you will then say, surely he is Jehovah Rapha because he's God my healer. You go through battles in life and then surely you will experience Elohim. 
El Shaddai, the Almighty God. So you would have a name that you can give to God by reason of the area of life that you are going through. So instability is not a bad thing for you. So going through what we are going through right now is not a bad thing because what we are doing is we begin to experience another side of God that we have never seen. We begin to see God in a way that we have never seen him. And the day that you don't have money to pay right out, God will then provide. And then you surely know that there is Jehovah, there is a God who provides, who meets all my needs, who gives me everything that I want, who is there to stand with me and give me whatever I want whenever I need it. So he's Jehovah who is there when I need him. So going through that instability is not a bad thing. So the Bible then says they then cross over and then they went to the other side. And when they got to the other side, the, the Bible says there was a man who had been in the tombs. There was a man who had been in the tombs. There was a man who was in the tombs. Now, interestingly, Jesus on the other side in a big church. Jesus on the other side, he had so many people following him. Jesus on the other side, he is one over 5,000 people who are gathering to hear his sermons. But he says, let us leave those 5,000 people. Let us cross over and go to the other side. Now, on the other side, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is leaving an entire church to go for one man. He is traveling that whole journey just for one man. There is just one man on the other side. When he gets to the other side, the Bible says, the man comes out of the tombs in the nation of Gadarenes. And now the Bible says, and this man had devils a long time. Number one. Number two, he lives in the tombs. Number three, he didn't wear any clothes. Number four, he cried out with a loud voice. Number five, nobody could help him. Let's try to break those three, five things. Number one, he everything within him was dead. That's why he was living amongst the tombs. So something within him was pulling him towards what he was. So here is a man who is alive but dead. Everything, he's spiritually is dead. His mind is dead. His capacity to do anything is dead. So he is then pulled towards the tombs. And the Bible says he had devils for a long time. So this man, he possessed by devils, there was nobody to be able to help him. There was nobody to be able to touch him. There was nobody to be able to transform his life. There was nobody to be able to cast the devils out of his life. And the Bible says he did not wear anything. So there was no covering over his life. There was shame all over him. And he, all the time he was crying out with a loud voice. And when Jesus came, the Bible says that in the devil is asking him, what is your name? And the man says, my name is Legion because we are many. Now, I believe his name could have been Peter. His name could have been Simon. His name could have been Jonah. His name could have been Philip. His name could have been Bartholomew. But something on the inside of him was answering for him. And he said, my name is Legion. So no matter whoever would want to try to talk to him, could not talk to him because something on the inside of him would always answer on his behalf. And now the Bible then says that Jesus says, come out of him. And the demon said to Jesus, as much as you cast us out of this man, do not, uh, do not cast us out of this region. Because this is the three things that I want you to catch about demons and, and the powers and principalities of darkness. Is that what they are fighting for is territory. What demons want is an area to control. Is an area to be in charge of. So that's why you find a demon will leave you and will go and sit on your brother. A demon will leave your brother and go and sit on your children's children. So what demons are wanting is to control a territory. So the demons that get gets out of the man. And then the, the, the man is all back in his mind, in his in his mind. And the Bible says that Jesus took a cloth and wrapped the man with the cloth. And the moment he wrapped the man with the cloth, the Bible says he sat and he was calm and he sat at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus spoke to him for hours. And after Jesus has finished speaking to him, he says to the man, the man says, Jesus, I want to follow you. And Jesus said, no, 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 you cannot follow me. I've got 12 disciples. I can only have a 18th disciple. But what I want you to do is I want you to rise up and go to the Decapolis, to the 10 cities, because they're, and, and go and tell them what I have done for you. Now, the Bible says he rises up and he goes to the Decapolis and he begins to preach in the Decapolis. Now, Deca means 10. We, 
Police means metropolitan cities as big as Johannesburg, as big as California. That's how big those cities are. And the Bible is saying he rises up after years of being possessed by demons, after years of being living in the tombs, after years of being in a solitary place where nobody was doing anything, but after having an experience and an encounter with Jesus, just for a, just for a, maybe about an hour or three hours, Jesus is having an encounter with this man. Immediately the man rises up and then he goes to the Decapolis. There are ten cities waiting to find the preacher. There are ten cities that have been looking for somebody to speak into their lives. There are ten cities that have been looking for somebody who can transform them and change them. But the man was in the tombs and Jesus understood and he heard the cry of a man that was crying from the other side and says to his disciples, let us rise up, let us go to the other side. Ladies and gentlemen, let me speak to you and say, there are four things or there are four blacksmiths that you need in your life that will take you to be able to move to a new dimension, to a new level. Number one, you have to have an encounter with Jesus. The only thing that you need in a season or in a time like this is to have an encounter with Jesus. The moment you have got an encounter with Jesus, that's the first blessing that will bring a transformation on your life. It does not matter for how long you have been in the situation. The moment you have got an encounter with Jesus, I tell you that things are going to change for you. So there might be battles that you are fighting right now. There might be weapons that are risen up against you. There might be all kinds of demons uh, that are standing against you and saying uh, you are not going to make it. Uh. There might be all kinds of devils from all kinds of directions uh, that are saying things are not going to happen for you. You might be in the middle of a warfare, left, right and center. The devil is attacking you and things seem like they are not happening over you. But I'm here to say to you, you have to understand that the moment you have an encounter with Jesus, that moment things are going to change over you, things are going to shift over you, the heavens are going to open over you. Yeah, I am here to tell you that Jesus is able to transform everything in a season like this. The second key thing that you need is your second key thing that you need in your life. You need somebody who can pray for you. You need somebody that can pray for you. You need somebody that can that can be able to, to believe in you, believe in your vision. If there's anything that you ought to do in a season like this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, in a season of instability, in a season where you're going to the other side, uh, in a season where you, you, you are you're believing God uh, for, for your business to be higher, where you're believing God that things are going to happen, that you, are, you have to believe God for intercessors. Uh, you have to, uh, to have people that rise up and say, I am going to pray for you. I decree over this your life in a season like this is that may intercessors rise up that will pray for your business. May intercessors rise up that will pray for your marriage. May intercessors rise up that will pray for, for, for your ministry. May intercessors rise up that will stand for you. The next thing that you need is you you, you, you will need a mentor. You will need a mentor. The Bible says he sat with Jesus for three hours. I don't know what he was told. I don't know whatever Jesus told this man because Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, and the rest of the disciples have to spend three and a half years walking with Jesus. He had to mentor them for three and a half years. He has to be telling them and teaching them the secrets of the kingdom for three and a half years. But this man, all he needs is about three hours sitting at the feet of Jesus. And he needs just a cloth that comes from the head of Jesus and he wraps around him and he tells them, go to the Decapolis. So the man goes and begins to preach a gospel as if he has been walking with Jesus for the past three and a half years. But all he had was just one encounter with Jesus and he got mentored in a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, in a season like this, you have to be catching things very fast because you don't know who God will bring in your life in a season like this. Who will tell you things in one hour that will make you the greatest businessman that has ever existed. You don't know who you meet in a season like this. Who will teach you some things in 10 minutes that will make you the greatest preacher that has ever lived. You don't know who you will meet in a, with in a season like this. Who can be the spare just, just, just one week to be with you. And the moment they spare one week to be with you, they will be able to speak things and secrets in which your life that will completely revolutionize your life change your life and give you a new direction. You don't know what God can do in a season like this that will transform your life completely. Because
gentlemen, you need some blacksmith in your life. You might be in the middle of a war and you don't know what to do, but I'm here to tell you that your prayer in a season like this is God send the right kind of people. Send an intercessor in my life. Send a man that can mentor me. Send somebody that can lift me up. The last thing that you need is people that can lift up your hands when you are getting tired. May God give you somebody that encourage, can encourage you in a season like this. People that can surround you and begin to encourage you and say, you can make it. You don't have to give up. You don't have to say it's over. It is not over until it's over. You have to keep on holding on. Because in a season like this, ladies and gentlemen, you have to be able to keep on fighting. Because the battle I know is over. But you have to have some blacksmith that stands with you. You have to have some men that fight with you. You have to have the courage to be able to continue and to go on. I pray for you that the favor and the grace of God may sit over your life. The favor and the grace of God may sit over everything that you're doing. That in a season like this, you will not give up. You will not give up. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord encourage you. May the good Lord continue to touch your life in the name of the Lord and Savior. We bless you. We bless you, O oh God. We will definitely be back again next week. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you always for being part and parcel of our broadcast. God bless you. Amen.